welcome to Q Sports International Expo Gentlemen, being hosted at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the Predator World 10 Ball Championship presented by CSI and sponsored by Predator. 128 players with a quarter of a million dollars prize money with $60,000 going to the winner. These two gentlemen are in the third round, one loss side. They'll need one more match to go to the knockout round of 32 players. This is George Stage and the booth, joined by the Mark, one and only Mark White. I wondered what you were going to call me for a second, then, George. Well, I was going to exaggerate, so, uh, <laughs> but I didn't. I'm uh, glad you didn't. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Last match of the night for today. My Miles Shaheen Q80 breaking off. He gave them a good hard hit. Now then, he's got a nice shot on the one ball, two over the side. Cast your professional eye, George, across this table and tell us, are there any pitfalls? He's got a strong shot here on the one. Easy position for the two. Go, has to go from the two to the three, and everything looks pretty much laying out for him. Omar is off of a big win this morning over Roberto Gomez. And uh, then he also defeated Lee Hanto. Well, what a comeback on table 11 on one of the outside tables. Francisco Sanchez Rez come back from the dead and he's beaten Gerson Martinez Boza by eight racks to seven. Wow, he was six to one. It was six to two. Six to two. Yeah. Six to one at one stage. Yeah. Wow. What a big comeback. That's a huge comeback. Tony Robles, who should be sitting where I'm sitting right now, is seven seven five down against Dennis Grabeck. Well, these two gentlemen here, pretty well matched. Uh, Omar Al Shaheen is a seven eighty seven Fargo. Koping Chung is an eight fourteen. They're close in age. They're three years apart, and it's funny to sit right here in the in the in the commentators booth and I watch Ko Ping Chung just eyeing Omar at the table. He's just sizing him up like a boxer would, isn't he? Just if you just watch him, he's just sizing him up like a boxer would. I hope and he doesn't come out swinging. Well, only well the cue he can swing. He's going to swing go. that Zen cue right at that three ball. Another result for you. Kunlin Wu has beaten and knocked out John Mora. Eight racks to three. Quite emphatically. That one. Nicholas De Leon is six four down to Oscar Dominguez. And Tyler Steyer is six two down to Jason Theron. There's a little bit of a shock as well. A guy that couldn't make a ball on this table yesterday from South Africa <laughs> got a donut served up by Mr. Shane Van Boning. Well, donuts go down easy. You forget about them when you get ready for your next meal. I like that. Let me write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> well, this gentleman here, 2019 Predator World 10 Ball Champion right here in this arena over Josh Filler, Joshua Filler, he's Taiwanese. That's his Zen Q he's using. And when he's at this stage, he moves with a purpose. Nothing's careless, nothing's out of place. You said he was sizing up his opponent at the table. Mm -hmm. His name is Ko, K-O. Sizing him up for a K-O, <laughs> huh? Well, he's got a fighter on his hands, because Omar is a scrapper, I tell you. He likes to grind, he's a grinder. He tries to find a way to win. He knows how to win ugly, he knows how to run out. If 
Fully focused. So first rack is going to go to Middleco. Middleco. And it goes. Rack number one. John Lehman, of course, our tournament director. And at this point, a referee. I've got a nice little fun fact about Las Vegas for you, just to lighten the mood a little bit, George. At 1,149 feet, the stratosphere is the tallest ob observation tower in the United States and the second tallest freestanding structure west of the Mississippi River. At only 1,100 feet? 1,149 feet? 1,400... 1,149 feet. Oh, observation. Observation tower. tower. Well, most observation towers are usually on top of a mountain, so they're a lot higher to begin with. They're like at ten or twelve thousand feet. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just <laughs> saying what was. It must be it, true because it was on the internet, George. Come on. <laughs> well, keep in mind it is in Las Vegas. I think the elevation of Las Vegas is somewhere in uh, two or three thousand feet, under under three thousand. So. It works. Meanwhile, speaking of tall, this young man has a tall order to make sure to keep that other young man you see in the upper right hand part of your screen in his seat. And with a break like that, he just might. One ball's down, shot on the two. Four balls available in front of a pocket. If he turns this cue, tracks this cue ball towards that eight, he's going to be in great shape. He is. Six ball looks to be just fine to go to the seven. If he gets right where he is now, he can just draw it off the eight, and that's what he's looking at. Or bring it down without you know touching anything. Coming back, okay. Nice, smooth draw stroke. Perfect, perfectly gauged and executed. Go in his last match. Defeated Ernesto Dominguez, eight to two. And prior to that, defeated Jer Jeremy Seaman, eight to seven. His only loss was to Sanjin Belovanovic. Belovanovic, excuse me. <laughs> See, you taught me how to end that just right, so I had to get it just right. So come back nicely to that. Oh, easy, yes. boss. Lovely, <laughs> isn't it? it no, a little double kiss off the eight ball. Well, it, it brought the eight ball off the rail, make this an easier shot. I think he's got just the angle to move over to where the spot is to be straight in on the eight for a stop shot, like that. And uh, what's that old English saying that uh, Sherlock Holmes used to use? Elementary, my dear Watson. There you go. We'll watch these two go down. Can you reach this? In it goes, so first. Coming out to zero up. I'm going to look around the room. Thought we were going to a break there, but we're not. Tell you what, Danny Olsen's had a great win over Beda Al Wahadi. He was also about six. Three down, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's come back to beat Beda. Eight six. Wow. Good for him. Dominguez, Oscar Dominguez. There's two of them here, of course. Father yes. and son. Nicholas Delion is facing defeat. Oscar Dominguez, seven four ahead on the hill. But you never know what might happen. Another one facing defeat, staring it in the eyes. Tyler Steyer, he's 7-2 down against Jason Theron. 
Yeah, Theron, um, I don't want to say disappointed us in the arena, but he just didn't have his best game. He didn't have half of his game. I think he disappointed himself, yes. to be yeah. honest. He That's played, uh, was it Shane that he played here? He played he got, Shane, got yeah. a zipper. Yep. Jason Shaw just beginning a match against Tommy Tokov. I just saw Tommy's been playing well. He's taken down some pretty big names. I just saw Jason's wife standing over at one of the booths, and I said, oh, Jason playing. She said, yes. I said, who? She said, Tommy Tokov. She said, he came up to me and thanked me for for being you know, really nice to him, and she, and she didn't know what he was talking about. He said, I stayed with you when I came to your ball hall with um, Hunter Lombardo, oh, wow. and, and she, she put them up in their house. Wow. She had forgotten all about it. Side pocket. Oh, I like that. Uses the gap in the rail for his cue to run. Just run it straight towards that eight. Don't go by it. And you know, shots like this, George, where I really Don't like this. It. Just really like this table because the pockets lay so flat, you know, on the rail. There's no nothing mm -hmm. jutting up to to grab your cue or yeah. you know stop you getting your cue parallel. I hit a few balls on them in Arizona, but that's the only time I've hit balls on these tables. I've yet to you know play a full rack of them, full rack of balls on them. You need to buy yourself one. Get it in your house. I know somebody that will fit you up with a nice light, free of charge. I got a great light. I made it myself. I had a box made for a shop lamp that I had inside of it, and then I bought a 12-inch wide, two four-foot panels that I put inside that, uh, LEDs, and they're just awesome. Meanwhile, Mr. Awesome here, Omar Al Shaheen, taking down the game. But Cole will be breaking. Yep. So he can only get one. After we go to a quick break, though, George.
back from our commercial break with Ko Ping Chung, 26 year old out of Taiwan. 814 Fargo to break the balls, leading 2 to 1. He just lost that game. He won the first two, dropped one, and back to get another one. Six ball was tracking right for the hole. Didn't go, it was kissed out. And Al Shaheen will come to the table. Pretty two here, George. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at either playing the one nine combo or possibly the three ball with the cue ball. And if he can be sure not to get behind the nine, I like that, that one ball ends up in a really good place. He's playing the nine, though. Right? Yeah, it's too much of a gamble to do it the other way. Wow. Proved to be a gamble there, wow. too. Wow. Oh dear. Well, these are spread out, very spread out. And you have the one, two, three in the upper part of the table. It doesn't have to travel. The four in the middle, the five, gosh. Um, this smooth operator right here will probably make quick work of this. But we have seen what looked like you never want to see an easy out because they're all nervy, you know. You're on the you're in the limelight. Then you're a professional player, you should be used to it. Or get used to it. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the arena lighting area. You're not gonna call it a kitchen? <laughs> I thought I'd change it up a bit. Uh, Omar Al Shaheen earlier in the tournament defeated Gerson Martinez. Then he lost to his countryman Ali Al Obadi. Got a long extension on his cue, John Lehman, keeping an eye on things just off camera. Making sure that that lovely pink t shirt doesn't go anywhere near the seven ball. And looks like he's got just enough angle to slide over for the five, but he can't slide over too far. If he adds a little draw to it, he might get a little more travel out of the cue ball towards the left. A little bit awkward queuing here. Yeah, just a little bit. He's right-handed, so he should just be able to come right over a little bit. I'm wondering if he won't just come all the way over to the right and play the six to the left side. Oh, he's going to go back and forth. Okay. Played that well. Yeah. Had a worried look on his face just for a second, but it's perfect. Nice slight angle on this. Stand down off the side rail. Right hand spin there, you see those arrows on those Arcos two balls spinning around. I like to get a set of those balls. You, you say that at every single tournament. And I've, I've, I've yet to, to, to do it. See, you're just like me because you don't like asking, remember? Predator is very generous, but I just, I just don't like to ask. Do you want me to ask for you? No, thank you. I know the boss. I know him too. Gave me a shirt yesterday, uh, Sunday. Nice one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back or going forward? 
he had a shot like this just recently. We were sitting here, and I said, remember, he's going to come just below the side pocket. This is almost the same shot. Yeah. I remember this well. Drew it right back. Yeah. Exactly the same as this. You're right. So he's seen this before. He's done this before, and he'll get it again. It's funny how situations like that come up. Do them often enough, you'll see them over and over. And Three goes. to one. Just take you around the room again, guys. Sharik Saeed is up against Donny Mills. Donny Mills from Florida. He's trailing Sharik, the man from Singapore, <laughs> by one rack. Blake Baker has just started against Yung Lung Chang. He's taken the first rack. And Jason Shaw playing against Tommy Tokov. Jason leads two to zero. So we'll have another five matches for you tomorrow, guys, beginning at 10 a.m. here in Las Vegas. And then we'll have another one at midday, 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. again. 24 hours from tomorrow, George, we'll be sat here again doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. There could be somebody else in the booth now that could. Tony's out. Well, and now we've got some of the some of the other professionals out. Maybe we'll get uh, one or two of them in. Yeah, with them playing the tournament, it's hard for them to come oh, up with guest commentary. Oh, what a scratch. So, another chance, early chance for Co. Ball in hand. I feel bad for all the viewers around the world having to put up with us, you know, five, six matches, five matches a day for the most part with only a couple of breaks i blame tony robles for not lo losing earlier <laughs> how how selfish of him not to get eliminated earlier george <laughs> well he tried to make a deep run and we're with him i mean he's a pool player first he's going back on the road with some uh, uh clinics yep. around the country You know, watching Ko move around the table, uh, we've seen him in the arena before. He was in here, I think, uh, the opening day, day two. He was here day two, he was here yesterday. And um, he just looks a little more settled than he did then. Starting to play some great stuff, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, more he look he looks more like the the co that I watched beat Joshua Filler here in 2019. I believe I called that match, or that might have been Jeremy and Jimmy Weich. How many games do you reckon you've commentated on? I have no idea. <laughs> I've done. Have you hit more balls than you've commentated on? Of course, I've been hitting balls since I was you know 14 and a half, 15 years old. And I hit oh, him like that. Ouch. Dear. I can still tell you when I hit him like that, it still bothers me. I don't even know if I've seen you play at all. No, you haven't. I don't think I've, I've seen you hit a ball. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, no, I mean, ever. Yeah. At any of the tournaments where you've even, where you've had a little knock, I've never even seen you, seen no. you play. I'm on YouTube. Go find some. I'm not that desperate to watch it. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of little matches from Arizona, little kind of like monthly matches, tours that we have down there. I've got a decent match against uh, the one and only GOAT, the greatest player of all time. George Tasha. No, no by, not by far. <laughs> I was getting 10-7, dude. <laughs> Efren Reyes. You can watch me play Efren. It's hard times. I might just do that. Oh, didn't quite get into that enough, I don't think. Well, he's going to play in the side, isn't he? He was trying to play in the corner. He's yeah. going to have to. He might even bank this. Or will he? Cutting, that's not a... I don't recommend cutting the ball in the corner. No, I, I, I like, like the uh, side ball. I like yeah. the side. Yep. Just draw off the cushion. Pass the tent. Oh, he's hit the tent. He's hit the tent, and that's gone wrong. 
Yeah. It's gone very wrong. He doesn't seem very bothered about it. I will say one thing about my game to you, Mark, though, is it's declining. <laughs> Mostly because I don't play. But of course, everybody says that, so let's not go there. Yeah, let's go back to this shot that Omar has to tell. Oh, how well did he play oh, that? Wow. How well has he played that shot? Brilliant tap on the table in appreciation there from Cloping. This Jump. is a two rail kick. When you play this shot a lot, play in one pocket if it comes up. You got you to know this angle to come off the side rail past the nine and come back and pocket that eight. He knows it. He knows it. Is the nine in the way, though? No. He's going to aim that cute ball right at the first diamond, right at it. Not hit it, but he aimed right at it. Straight high. He's hitting it perfect, in my opinion. Well, perfect to the oh, pocket. I'm a corner player. <laughs> he's gone in the drink. Ouch. Well, it was a one pocket shot. That's what it looked like. He hit it where it looked like. That tells me these, these tables play a little short. Great shot, except that it scratched. So I guess it wasn't so good. This to go three two. Close the gap. Behind. And we'll go to a break. I stole your words in that. the balls. Middle co. Ko Ping Chung. 26 year old. We got a good look at his 32 year old brother at noon playing Lee Van Corteza. Unfortunately he lost that match. It was kind of an odd match but he lost it. We got a couple of views of Ko Ping Han. Oh he's gone in the side pocket. Ouch. Usually you go there when you cross, when you hit across yep. the front of the ball. Yep. Across the one ball. certainly did. Ball in hand for Omar, and we could have a tall, tied ball game real quick.
one of the things that you speak to quite a bit, Mark, is how to take advantage of those 60 seconds after the break. Omar didn't really plan his attack real well. He should have been doing that prior. When it comes to strategy and strategy. See what I mean? He's using that yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's, he could have used that for free time. That's why I pointed it out to you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. Of course, you've, you've been a big proponent of it. And, uh, you know, we've both been coached by the same commentator that, that, that harps on that and says, take, your, take that 45, 50 seconds to plan out the whole rack, not just, you know, your next shot. You've got 30 seconds for each shot. Save that extension to where you really need it. Dangerous, dangerous shot. Yep, he flirted with danger. Yes. Got away with it. He's looking good through this. He's worked out where he had to. It's opened up pretty well. Keeping it simple, except for that. <laughs> that scared me when he went through those balls. I thought he was gonna get hooked behind seven. Starting to cue very, very nicely now. Omar Al Shaheen, runner up to Albin Ocean in last year's World Pool Championships. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to be heading to London for that straight after this. I wonder if Albin can defend his title. Uh, well, he just got uh, Arizona Billiards ma uh, man of the Player of the Year. Um, he's showing quite a bit here. And uh, Omar proceeded to, uh, to run out on Coe's break. Ties it up at three. And now we'll have a break of his own. What do you reckon we have another little? Little chat. <laughs> You're right, George. Actually, yeah. you haven't been coughing as much today as you. No, I haven't. I, uh, I've been in pretty good, pretty good shape. Current International Airport is the seventh busiest airport in the United States and North America. I used to fly in and out of McCarran so much from about 2003 to 2006. Just flying on business all the time. I love the way when you fly in, you're so close to the strip. Mm -hmm. It's great, isn't it? I've never flown in at night, though, which I've it's beautiful. really, yeah, I yeah. just haven't done that. I've been on the 51st floor of this building. That's mm -hmm. kind of like that, right? Kind of. Not but, quite as high, hopefully. There, hopefully. You see a lot, you know. Yeah. You see was, a lot. It was lovely up there. Now Shaheen breaking off dead center. Something got in his head. Look for the wing balls, the six and the seven on this occasion, I think it is. Or is it the two and the seven? Can't quite see. You call those wing balls. The two ball went straight at the pocket, oh. but just caught the corner. And it's um, kind of like the weather. Well, we had rain a couple days ago, didn't we? We so. certainly did, inside and out. <laughs> I don't usually say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he's hooked with the three ball. Well, where are you going to push to? What are you going to do? That's what Tony Robles would say. Is that what he would say? What are you going to do? He's a New Yorker, isn't he? Yeah. He's going way down there and just give him a sliver of that ball, huh? 
Or is he going to challenge him with a shot? Jason Shaw, 4-0 up now on Tommy Tokopf. Well, this is a knockout round that we're watching here because the loser goes home. He's told him to not even bothering getting out of his chair. Yeah. I'm not going to wear my shoe leather out or the carpet. Well, Carry on. I think the big reason for it, he's, he's close to the rail. He's got to hit the head rail and come back for a shot on the two. Well, it's a tough shot. I, I fancy him to make this. Don't see much else. You can't try to play behind the 10. Um, you can't bank the, the one ball down. You have to go for this. Just to let the viewers know, Omar might have been watching that on one of the big screens there, right? There is a big, huge screen either side of this arena that the players are facing, which they can have a look at. And he might have had a look on the screen and thought, oh, I don't want that. Oh, there you go. Yeah. He had a slash at that. He's made it in the side. Didn't call it in there, obviously. Omar has now, the option to go ahead. No, Sorry. I was going to say there's no way he's going to give this back. I thought you were done there. <laughs> I'm nearly done. Oh, nice big crowd in here again, George. And it's really hard to walk around anywhere here now in this, even though it might be 40,000 square feet. There's not a lot of room, is there, when no, you there get all these bodies in these here? Players. It's hard to walk down the aisles, yeah. Um, yeah, these players are one more match away from being in the final 32. As I understand it, the top 16 players will be seated according to their player ranked scores. So it's their Fargo and their tournament scores. Uh, tournament points combined that puts them puts them um, I'm sorry no I'm, I'm incorrect it is not Fargo has nothing to do with this the top 16 world ranked mm -hmm. players mm -hmm. will be seated and then the other 16 it's a random draw I was thinking of the pro series Pro Billiard Series events, and that's how those work. But for the Predator World 10 ball, it is WPA rules, and they do use the world rankings. Well, we have got a US Pro Billiard Series event going on, the women's one, of course, mm -hmm. the Alpha Las Vegas Women's Open going on, started today, 2 p.m. And in fact, if you go to world10ball.com, you can uh, click on, I think it's rank, and it gives you the ranking, and you'll see all 16 players. Tough place, tough, tough to get shape on the seven here because he looks like he's straight in. The angle is going away from the you bottom of the table. He's drawing it back. You see how quickly he ran yeah, around the table to have a quick look. Yeah. He realized he didn't have an extension left. So that was a tough, tough little shot. He's going to take a stiff cut here. Steep cut, excuse me. Stiff, steep. A little bit of inside, gonna go up and down. No, he's gonna hit the ball. Oh, is it gonna land on the rail? Is that by design? Both balls on the rail, maybe. No, the eight's just off it, he's okay. Great shot, played with authority confidence perfect on this nine ball someone's asking they don't get the pc co pc co is ping chung co but they pronounce it co ping chung and omar pronounces it drop the 10. Four lead, four to three. 
Omar rattles off three games in a row to take a one-game lead. Yeah, and someone else who's rattled off three games in a row is Alex Pagulion. He's gone three up against Niels Johanny. Jesus Atencio, Mr. Jumping Jesus, is 1-1 one, one with the butcher, Mieszko Fortunski. Jason Shaw is on a roll, 5-0 up against Tommy Tokopf. And I had one more to bring you, but I can't quite find it at the moment. Oh, there it goes. Shar Sharik Saeed is 7-5 up against, oh, Donnie Mills. against Donnie Mills. There you go, finishing my sentence. Well, I was again, reading George. over your shoulders what I was doing. Well, it's very and, rude and to it, read over somebody's shoulder. You know that, don't you? Are you not rude. Are you not, are you not taught not that as a child? No. Do you know, my dad used to say to me, I used to stand behind him and read the newspaper, mm -hmm. the, the football news yeah. and scores. You just say, don't read over my shoulder, it's rude. Because <laughs> you know you never know what somebody might be reading. Yeah, that's very true. Just never overlook my shoulder when I'm on my phone, George. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> For your own good, not mine. Well, I had to see where you were going so I could see where I could, you know, jump in. Uh, but, uh, and I was going to say, Sharik Syed over Donnie Mills, 7-5. to five. That would be a fine, fine win for Sharik. Sharik. Oh, Sharik. That's, that's, that's a poor shot. He's played there. He's given him a full view of this one ball, George. It's all about perspective. Omar is happy to have it. He doesn't think it's poor. He's happy he's got it. I got a shot. But this ain't no gimme. It's one of those shots you see players play now, though. Down into this bottom right-hand corner. Get that Q-tip through the ball hold it for the two in the top right absolutely perfectly played brilliant shot nice little ripple from the audience I'm going to go home and cry. Why is that? I'm <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> um. Don't cry, George. We'll have more games tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been admonished. I'm getting spanked left and right here. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lamar is looking right down the barrel of this corner pocket with a five ball in between. Don't forget your homework. How many Americans are left by tomorrow morning? Yeah. Is that what it was? Okay. I was hoping you'd forgotten. I almost did. And this cue ball will be coming back in reverse. Nice <laughs> ball. Shaheen. Al Shaheen is going to take a 4 3 lead here. Coe's just it? gone off the boil a little bit. We'll go to a break after this 10 ball.
We are back to live action here with Omar Al Shaheen to break the balls, leading five to three. Somewhere along the line, there was a score mix up. Oh, nice two ball. Saved the one from, uh, saved the cue ball from being going in there, but ended up with no shot on the one. Guess who's in the booth with me, folks? Mark White said he can't stand my condescending behavior. <laughs> <laughs> and he, <laughs> he's left the booth. And Tony Robles is just back from uh, playing a match. And he's in the booth with me right now, live. Tony Robles, welcome back, bud. Yeah, thanks for having me, bud. Uh, thank you for, to everyone for tuning in. I uh, hope you've been enjoying the event thus far. I just got eliminated from the event by uh, from Dennis Grabe and uh, had a great match with him. We were, we were back and forth, back and forth to the end. And then I, I eventually... Uh, Lost eight five, mm -hmm. but had a lot of fun. But you were, you were, like you said, yeah, you were right there. Yeah, I was Just up five three and scratch on the yeah. break, and then he ran out, and then broke and ran out tied five five, and then uh, he missed. Uh, I think he missed a nine ball. I think when it, to go up six five, and then I, I think I, I I tried to play a safe and left him a shot. And well, it, it was interesting. It was interesting. It was it was a lot of fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I, I I felt really really good this event. So good. I'm very happy with good my performance. Good to see you on the on the road back. So feeling good when yeah. you're playing. So what did I miss? Did I miss anything interesting here this uh, match? You missed this <laughs> match. This match so far has been a little bit, um, should I say, not strange, just a little bit different. Was that a double jump? It looked like one. We already had that on the screen. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it's gone viral. <laughs> here comes a jump. Here comes the jump from Omar and the three ball. Does it look like he has a, a, a triple combo on the four with a three six there? It's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, if maybe if we get a better look at that from a different angle. Yeah. It looks like it's, it's you know, it's possible it might be on. Now yeah, we're at four, uh, five three, excuse me. Tony and uh, Co started out with wow, two games. Wow, what a great shot, sorry. No, that's good. That's no. Co started out with two games and then they exchanged games. And then Omar has rattled off four games in a row for this 5-3 lead. Wow. I think he's looking at that combo. I think he's calling it. If he does that, the three will stop where the six is yeah. if he hits it right. And then the cue ball go three rails. Make sure he doesn't run into the five, though. Oh, he's just tapping it. I think he was, he says he pointed to the five. I guess he was trying to lead the cue ball behind the five. <laughs> it's a little ways <laughs> off. Yeah, unfortunately, I did not get into the cash, guys. Um, I would have needed to win one more match after this one in order to get into the cash. So, but I appreciate you asking. Thank you. Where'd that cue ball go? Right behind the five? Yeah, but the, he pointed at it too. Now see, this is what I like about having two players like Coping Chung and Omar Al Shaheen. They're out there pointing to where they need it to go so I can talk about it later and improve my commentary. George, <laughs> you're one of the best, wait, listen to what I'm gonna say. You're one of the best commentators that I've had the pleasure of working with. And it's an honor and a joy to be here, you know? I. I Take it with a grain of salt, man. I'm, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm having a good time with that one, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Meanwhile, Omar's 
having a good time with this rack. Has he got a good shot to come back? Yeah, this is to come within one of going to the, on the hill. Yeah, and he's rattled off four games. And uh, it pretty much looks, does that eight ball go by the by the 10? It looks like it does. Okay. And, and even if it didn't, I mean, I'm pretty sure he would end up with the proper angle on the seven yeah. to get to play the eight and see. But it looks like it does. Looks like he has, looks like he can fit at least one Mack truck there. <laughs> and uh, Omar agrees with you. He's gonna stay on that side of it. Wow. Expected a much, much tighter, tighter match than allowing Omar to go five games in a row. And be one game short of the hill. So Tony, we've missed your insight and expertise here. It's fun to have and it's good to have a pro player in the booth with us. It's always a joy to be here, George. I, I, I love comment you know, doing commentary and and I'm pretty good friends with just about all the players. Uh, I know them all very well, so we hang out a lot, we go to eat a lot, you know, we do things together after the matches, before the matches, so. And you bring a lot of insight from the players, you know, mm -hmm. all the knowledge they have, uh, the shots, how to play them, why to play them, things of this nature. I think, you know, I told you, I believe I told you the story of the Cole brothers when they, they, they used to all come to New York uh, mm -hmm. to play my events when I was running the tour for 12 plus years, and I had a pro event twice a year. And uh, we invited them to our house for dinner and my wife challenged them to a game of eight ball. Oh, wow. But on a miniature table that's the size of a smartphone. <laughs> oh, the little tiny and ones. <laughs> so she beat both the Cole brothers on that table. <laughs> and the, um, big, uh, the older Cole said no more mm -hmm. when she beat him. So my wife told them to let them know that she's been practicing her jump shots on the miniature table <laughs> to get ready for them when they visit again. <laughs> that's funny. That's a good story. That's, that one was good. <laughs> Well, Omar is in control here. He's going to stop the cube with the five there for the two in the corner. Do you do you risk the gap? I think he just rolls it down a bit, or it just unfollows it a bit. He feels very comfortable with the uh, cut. with the cut from there. If he just goes a little in front of the two ball, I think a stun follow is a better shot. Unless he really like rolling it, but you know, on these tables, you know. They're a little bit on the fast side. A stun follow is a better option. Oh, Ouch. look, he missed it. And sometimes we pay more attention to the cue ball than the object ball. Looks like he's cutting the ball. Or is he going to play safe behind? He's cutting the ball right in. Yeah, he just went off nice the six shot. just enough to leave the, the, you know, enough of the mm -hmm. three to where he can pocket it, go two rails, and play the four in the upper right hand corner pocket. You know, being on the rail makes this a much tougher shot. And going back and forth, um, it's, a, it's a little bit of an order, but this guy is up for it all day long. Well, Apparently he's not. Missed the ball. Got the cue ball back from yeah. the four. Yep. Yeah, someone was uh, mentioning about me making a living in this game. Yeah, um, I've always done lessons, <coughs> clinics, tours, mm -hmm. leagues, and that's how I made all my money. I got honest truth, the last time I ever got down in my shot, and ask myself if I don't make the nine ball, I can't pay the rent, was in the 90s. Because back then when I went through that and I missed uh -huh. the nine ball and I didn't pay my rent and had to borrow money to pay my rent, I made it my business to make sure I'm never in that position again. There you and go. I've never looked back since, yeah. you know? I mean, I went for years without, I mean, making plenty of money. In New York City, you, you, you charge money. 125 to 250 an hour for private lessons, depending whether they come to you or you go to them. And for private events, I was charging 500 an hour. 
You know, wow. so it's like, you know, it's good. In New York, you get that. Yeah. I can think of uh, doctors that don't get 500 an hour. <laughs> but well, lawyers get 500 lawyers, an hour. Some lawyers get nothing. Uh, you got to be a pretty good lawyer to get 500 an hour. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I, I try to give this advice to players. I said, you know, you're in your home state. You have a good reputation. Take advantage of that good reputation. Go to an event manager, event planner. You know, go to, to, to companies. See if they're willing to host a corporate party at the end of the year for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then you can do business like that. And when they see you, you know, doing the party for them, they Come can down. recommend other people to you. You know, that, that's how I started. So you marketed yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's the important I was part. a go-to guy in New York for anyone that were, was doing uh, television shows and film. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with Marvel's Punisher, The Punisher, Marvel's Daredevil. I worked with HBO's Boardwalk Empire, Limitless, a TV show, uh, Showtime's Billions. I can keep going on and on. I worked with so many television shows, and it got to the point where anytime anything came up, um, when it came to television shows, he would call me right away. Yes. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. That's it's awesome. a great experience. Well, Koping Chung is at work here. And uh, he's got to work his way back because his <coughs> opponent is one game from the hill, and he's a lot further away than that. This will get him to four, these last two balls. He closed the gap to two games. But in the alternate break format, it's hard to get him back. Mm-hmm. It, it truly is. You have to hope, you know, you make a ball on the break and end up with a shot. Or, you know, vice versa. Time out. We'll be right back. live at the Predator World 10 Ball Championships in the Pro Arena at the back of the ballroom at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Omar Al Shaheen to break the balls, leading six games to four over Koping Chung, Middle Co. And talk about a world championship. 128 players yep. from all over the world. And what a field it's been. Mm -hmm. We're missing a few, but there's reasons for them not being here beyond our control. This was an invitational. And by world rank. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He sure did.
Yeah, this is one of those shots where you either take the combo on the nine, but I don't think it's on, or you know, get the yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely not on, or get you have to end up with the correct angle on the three to get to the four. Just go to the rail and come he out. You overhit it a bit. Uh, he's. Don't be surprised if he plays the four in the lower left hand pocket. You know, hits it very hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it looks like he's gonna do. See, he's thinking about it now. He's thinking maybe I can draw it before the pass the side pocket and in between the six and the ten and play in the same pocket, or just oh roll it like barely to get in between. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure that you feel confident enough to make the the, the shot hitting it that soft. Would you consider back cutting it to the pocket? He's going to the left side. No, I think he's gonna, like he's gonna slow roll it. Yeah. Not even, he stunned it, but I don't know if he got there. See, I don't I don't no. think that was the right shot. He didn't have the angle to do that because he had such a full hit on the three right. ball, he didn't have any movement on the cue ball. See, when I was looking at that, I thought he could draw it off the nine and play the four in the same pocket he played the three in, but mm -hmm. play the three <coughs> ball to the right side pocket and come off the nine and slide over to that rail. But it looked like he might hit too much nine and stay there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I see what you mean, just going to the rail and just kind of catching the gap between the seven nine. And you know, if he wanted to, he could have just stuck the cue ball to the nine ball. Mm -hmm. You know, just bank it, mm -hmm. you know, off the top rail and leave the cue ball behind the nine. Wow, look at this wow. roll. <laughs> now, he's made a couple of little kicks like that early. Yes, I know. I saw, saw one from him this morning, too, in his match against, um, who did he play this morning? Roberto Gomez. And um, uh, just a little kick where he rolls up onto a ball, just like he did there. Although I think that may not have been intentional. Mm hmm but uh, where you can see was intentional. And so he's, he's, he's soft moved that, soft kicked that cue ball into a, a safety position a couple of times. Well, this is a extremely important shot for young Cole here because this is either come within one or have Omar go to the hill. Yeah. And you know the nine's gonna act as a stopper there kind of if he hits it on the opposite side. Ouch. Yep. Those last two kisses hurt him. Yep. Omar's excited. He's coming back to this table. And he'll still have to play one more match to get into the knockout round of 32. And that match is tomorrow, I believe. Yes. Correct? Yeah, this in the is morning. the last match. This is the last match of the day. We have the ladies playing on half the tables. And their Alpha Las Vegas Open, playing the Pro Billiard Series format. Let's see if he rolls it for the side pocket does and that perfect angle to come down for the 10 as a, a commentator I know would say that's just lovely and be on the hill after this 10 ball John Lehman, our tournament director, to rack the balls using that Predator triangle rack. Uh, someone asked uh, early this morning, I think they asked us, and I forgot to answer them because I found out right away. Mm -hmm. When will this rack be available for the general public for sale, for retail? And I was told sometime this summer, probably a couple okay. months from now, this rack will be available. It's still in its uh, infant stages. So they might, uh, they're taking a look at making an improvement. Yeah, yeah, definitely ask Predator tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, no, I did. Oh, you they, did? Okay, I did. good. I asked Fantastic. I was told sometime this summer. Okay. Well, and summer's not far away. <laughs> no, they said two months. So, uh, and, there, and, and this has all been an evolving process. I mean. Hey, Chrome Hearts at. Um, the Cole brothers came to New York about, I want to say four or five years ago when I was still running my tour. Uh, they used to come to my uh, Steinway Classic 
a tournament that I had, and they also played in the Gotham City Classic, which was also a 20,000-plus added event in Brooklyn, New York. That guy behind Omar looks like a lot of the people I see. Phone in his hand. <laughs> That's Darth <laughs> Bader. That's that. Darth Bader. Is that is that uh, Bader Aldewaldi? Yeah, Aldewaldi. Supporting his fellow mm -hmm. Kuwait player. Center of the table here. I think he came a little short. No, he yes. didn't. No, he didn't. He's good. He's good. And he comes right over for this. Yeah, this is looking good. This will close it up to five, but this man's on the hill, which means he'll get, what, two more breaks to close it out. And like, I, like you mentioned earlier, you know, the more you're behind, the tougher it becomes to get yeah. that because you have to hope your opponent makes a mistake on, on their end with their break. I got a good question for you, I think, that'll relate to what where I'm going to go here. Uh, what do you think the average or percentage of a pro player like Omar to break and run out of rack. What do you think he needs? One out of three? One out of two? One I, out I of can definitely I can definitely see that depending on whether or not you're playing on a table that's breaking well and mm -hmm. racking well. The, the key is to if you're using a magic rack then yes. Yes. That, yeah, that, to answer easy. your question quickly then yes. With a magic rack I wouldn't even ask the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here I will, and for this reason, uh, you know, we're seeing, we're not seeing very many break and runs on this table, uh, or with the referees racking, uh, but we have seen a couple players come into this arena. For instance, little Eric Roberts, a young, young man from Tennessee, mm -hmm. who defeated Niels, he looked like he had a really strong break, it looked good. Uh, a couple of good ones, he had a few good ones, a couple of eh, not so good ones, but he was able to pull off a, a big match. And and a lot of it was due to the break and a couple of big breaks that he got from his opponents. Yeah, but, you know, there, there are some players that obviously break better or more mm -hmm. consistently than others, kind of like Shane. Shane has to have the, yeah. the most consistent break in the last 20, 30 years, as long as he's been playing, I guess. Well, to get to five. And we'll stay with you. So yeah, any interesting uh, uh, women's matches, uh, matchups that you know about? Uh, uh, Mark was watching those. They gave us a player profile for that, and they gave us two of them. I gave one to Vince, and Mark has the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's watching, and I think he's gotten familiar with a lot of the women players, uh, where I, I, I am not. And so uh, uh, he's, he's watching that a little bit more. When we do commentary, I'll study up on okay. them. Okay. Be ready for them, but I really can't tell you uh, what's going on. I haven't even seen the bracket. I've been busy trying to prepare for these guys right here. Al Shaheen on the on the on the hill, leading seven to five. Trying to close this out to move on and send Ko Ping Chung. Wow, so much action and nothing. All it did was make a lot of noise, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> I'll show no go. So yeah, I mean, he has an opportunity here to shoot the one in the corner, the two. Unless he's thinking of the two, one, two combination, and break up the four with the one ball. Mm -hmm. But if, if he does that, you know, the cue ball comes off the four, it's gonna go towards the five. It's yeah. gonna have to manage the speed. It all depends on how thick or thin he hits that two ball. You wouldn't consider playing that one in the corner? That's what I would do. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what, that's what I sorry, said yeah. originally. You know, yeah. it's just that he, he was looking as though as if he was calling the two. Yeah. But you know what I like about this is that if he hits this just right and hits the rail first and comes off the four at a 90 degree angle, the cue ball will go across the table and he can play the three ball in the upper right hand corner if it goes. 
past the ball. Yeah, I can see that past the seven. It looks like it does. You see, look, it goes ball. across yeah. the table, just like I said, and then he plays the three ball oh, in. Oh, look at this. He got this. close. He got close to a scratch, but he hit that perfect. That's a straight pull shot. He hit that perfectly. He hit that beautifully. What a good shot that was, because look how he just ended up perfect for the three. Just the right angle to go for the four. Would you consider just moving it back a little bit and taking the bank on the four? On the side? I mean, it all depends. I mean, he, I think he has enough angle to get, to get the all cue the way ball, over? you know, yeah, past yes. the nine ball. I think he's fine. He, he's following, so yes, he does. <laughs> well, I thought he was following straight up and coming down back towards it. Rack for him, because if yeah. he can run this out, he's breaking, mm -hmm. and he can tie it up at Hill Hill. That's right. And all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's uh, wiped out that three-game deficit. That you started out with. Oh, wow. That is a shocker. Yeah, I, we definitely didn't expect that. No, didn't see that coming at all. Especially those down the, down the rail shots like that. Well. Probably focused a little too much on the cue ball there, as opposed to focusing on making sure he made the ball. You think he was focusing on the on, on the five ball? Or, or could kind be. Of, yeah, I could got be it. the position, yeah. I got it. Thinking I've got it already and we're good to go. And he kind of let up a, li a little bit. On mm -hmm. it. I'm not sure. I just I'm uh, wondering which one which one it was. They both generate the same results sometimes. Right. Oh, did you overhit this? Oh, second for a second there it looked like you overhit it. And yeah, it'd be up on top. Yeah. Very nice speed. Oh, Mars looking good here. Yeah, I mean, he has an opportunity here to shoot the eight after the seven and either slide across for the nine. I kind of like going two rails off, you know, go towards the nine. I, I like using that angle better. But wait a minute. That's because he tried to hold it. He decelerated his stroke wow. and he did not he did not cut that ball. He's still both. alive. He's still alive. That's a big shot, a big mistake from both players, mm -hmm. and look who's going to benefit. Yeah. And you know he's going to take advantage of this opportunity. Oh, he's got to close it out. If he doesn't close this out, well, you know. Yeah. The, no need to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just not. He's wondering why. Why was the, I mean, he had just shot and the clock was beeping. And it continued to beep. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, he's wanted to, think he wanted to make sure that he understood what was going on. Yeah, I thought, he, I, I thought like you did, he wants to clean the ball, but no, he was, hey, why is that clock beeping? Mm -hmm. Just the communication. Well, this is to come within one, George. Yes, it is. And he'll be breaking.
to live action. Coping Chung to break. Needing this game to force this to a hill-hill battle. At which point, Omar will have the opening break because of the alternate break format and the fact that he won the lag. Tony Robles is sitting right here next to me, breaking down the shots for us. Get that one a little bit off center. He's made a ball on the break. Mm -hmm. Looks like the five in the side. The overview can show us the ball at the bottom of the pocket since they're drop pockets. Uh, how's that cue ball going to work out, Tony? Three rails up against the two, three? I mean, e either that or he's going to play it safe, you know, underneath like, the nine. That's what I'm, that, yeah. oh, down, way down he, there? Yeah, yeah, he might, he might do that. But if he can bank the one ball across and put it in front of those balls, you know, the two, three, eight, right. and send the cue ball underneath the nine, that's a good shot. You know, the other option is either bank it or cut it and play the two ball in the low left-hand corner pocket. I don't know how he's feeling. I don't know if he's feeling that or not, you know. See, yeah, see, I like playing that cue ball to the two, three, eight, and the one ball see? down. There you go, look. Yeah, he went he down the here. nine. He went down here. He's gonna and put the cue. That's Perfect. why he kind of wanted to put the one in front of that those, mm -hmm. just in case he doesn't get them behind the nine. He still has blockers. Gotcha. But I don't know if he left that gap open there between the two and the eight to hit the one, because if it's if he did, it's going to be an easy hit for Omar. Yeah, it's just a, it, it's just a small kick, or he can maybe even thin it. And he's probably going to try to sneak it past the three ball, right? Past the three ball. And I think he might have left it. Nope. I think that was a good shot. Mm -hmm. Let's see. A chrome, chrome here sat in the chat said that he met me at Corner Billiards around 2004. Wow, Corner Billiards. Those brought back great <laughs> memories. You know, Corner Billiards is now known as Amsterdam Billiards in New oh, York City. Oh, is it? Yeah. I, I, I so, never yeah. been to New York, so I just don't. So it's I good to hear from you. So he can definitely see the one. Now is he going to try to bring him back behind the nine again? Nope, he's just going to try to leave it there and put it on the other side. And not go in the side pocket. Well, he's kicking at it. Slow speed. He hit the one. Wow, he hit it great. He hit it perfect. Good shot. I want to say hi to everyone in Taiwan. Hello, thank you for tuning in and uh, for rooting your your players on. I think it's awesome. I like the fact that a lot of them wear the same shirt. I've seen uh, Yu Lung Chang wear the same shirt, and I've seen mm -hmm. oh yeah, going it also, and, and they all have that Taiwan Typhoon logo on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been wearing that for years. Gonna kick it softly by the yo. What Very a nice. great shot! Very nice. I'm wondering if he left him enough room to hit that. To the right. <laughs> yeah. Because if he can hit it thin enough and send the cue, the one ball by the nine ball, the cue ball will go past the six ball, and maybe stop behind the seven and the ten, if he can hit it thin enough. Even if the one ball hits the bottom rail and comes back up. The key is to put put him behind the 10 or the 7. And I think he almost did that. Let's take a look at Coe's face. I think he's got a kick shot. Very nice safety battle going on here. Yes, it is. Enjoying it's nice it. tactical. Uh, they're both and very, very delicate shots. They're mm -hmm. kicking around, and the shots are very delicate. So now is he going to try to put him behind the 3 to 8? He would have to hit it pretty thin in order to do that. Oh, he just went for a simple save. That, that's not a bad save. I mean, I think that's not actually, that's actually pretty good as long as he can hit the rail first, you know, right before the one, because I kind of like that because he knows that the seven is a potential blocker and so is a nine. So he's going to have to really hit this good in order to come between the 10 and the seven if he decides to go long rail. Look at his focus. He's, he's. 
He's on his toes. You know, one of the things I like to say is here at the in the Rio All, All Suites Hotel and Casino, we'll sell you the whole seat. But if you can see uh, Co, you'll only need the edge. <laughs> Well, let's see, can he make the two ball in the lower left-hand corner pocket? I'm not sure if he can. <laughs> I do that so often, I laugh at myself. Um, he hasn't even looked at it. Uh, I. It looks like it just might go in the lower corner pocket, right by the three. Let's see if he can draw it and spin it enough to get behind it. If not, then he's just probably gonna try to play it safe on the two. Oh. So oh, he missed it. it. He missed, missed it. it. Yeah. He missed it. And he might have left. Omar, just enough of an angle to draw it back for the two in the corner if it goes. Nope, it doesn't. Would I think he's looking at the other, the other side. How about just stopping it there and playing the combo in the three? Is that too tough of a combo? Yeah, that, that combo, Is it a combo? Yeah. Is it a yeah, that's a very tough combo from, from here. Yeah, Absolutely. On the yeah. screen, it looks like it might. Uh, I think he's going to play the two ball in the same pocket. But I think he overdrew it. Fortunately for him, he can see it. Mm, did he get him? Did he get a rail? Yeah, I don't think he got a rail. Well, no rail. Yeah, got ball in hand. Get him ball in hand. Go. It was a touchy shot. It was a very touchy very, shot. Yeah, yeah, because he had to hold it behind the eight. And this is what Co needs. This would be a good comeback. This would be a great match. Oh, well, you know, I, I always love Hill 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 matches are always my favorite. Well, you know, this will be a good way to close out the day for him, come back tomorrow just really mm -hmm. feeling his oats. Yeah, I mean, isn't he a yeah. former world ten ball champion anyway? He, he won he this won one it, right yeah. here in twenty nineteen. Yeah. He beat yeah, uh, Joshua Filler here. So I'm wondering if he's going to stop or roll down actually, maybe roll down a bit so he can get a better better angle on the four ball and then try to play the six ball in the low left-hand corner pocket. He came back towards it. Because if the six doesn't go, the only other thing I see here is roll forward, two cushions with inside spin and play the six right where he's, he's uh, pointing to. <clears throat> so you don't think it goes in the lower left hand? Oh, he could just try it. Look, it's yeah, even better. Yeah, yeah no, I, I thought he had an angle there. I think that's even better. Boy, he's looking, looking good here. This angle looks a little tough. Stick, you know, I, I like coming off the bottom rail here with follow. It's tricky. You could come right by the 10 and get behind it. Well, I mean, if he has enough angle, he can slide it past the nine, but you have to be careful with that one because you have to hit it perfect speed. I like stunning it right so there. I, I like just following it. Just like that? Just, yeah, there just, you go. just make sure you don't overhit it, that's all. Yep. Nice and soft. Do you take the eight in the side here? You know, you can take it in the side, or you can go three rails and go with the eight ball in the top left-hand pocket. And kind of the reason I kind of like that one, unless he can he can hit it with inside spin. Yeah. If he has a proper angle to hit it with inside spin and just stop by the center of the table, then he's good. That's exactly what he's doing. He's going to go straight at it and send this to the <coughs> hill and be. And he's going to be in his chair while Omar breaks, so he's going to have to depend on finding a way to get Omar off the table. Got two balls left here. A and we're going to have game. a hill hill thriller. We'll keep going. We'll stay right with you right here and we'll watch this develop. We have pretty close to a full house. We have people on both sides of the screen watching the screens and the outer tables.
John Racken balls. At this point, this is the, this will be the last game of the set and the last game of the night. We'd like to thank all the viewers around the world from Taiwan, Europe, the United States, Latin America. I know you're all you're all with us. You've all been with us for what now? We had four four days of a tournament. This is the third day of seven days now. Yeah. We've had to put up with our voices. Luckily, Tony comes in and uh, brightens things up. <laughs> but uh, Omar Al Shaheen won the lag, so he gets to break, and it's all important. One of these two gentlemen will be out of the tournament. The other one will have one more match to get to the final 32. And in the final 32, the top 16 with a world ranking will be will be seated, and the other randomly drawn. Wow. And we'll be off and running in a single elimination tournament with a race to 10. What a pretty awesome break there, George. That ball just came right from the behind the one ball, straight to the side pocket, that four yeah. ball. Yeah, he has a perfect angle to go between yeah. the three and the nine and between the 10 and the two to play the two in the upper pocket, upper corner. Better hope they didn't hit it, over hit it. Being three games down, Co did what he had to do to bring it to a hill hill match. Mar's got a touchy shot here to get good on this three ball. He did very, very well. Yes, he did. Yeah. And you know, you know what's funny is I usually hit that with a little bit of right-hand English, with inside English. He hit it with a little bit of left, it looked like. It still opened up the angle to go that way. Wow, he made quick work of this rack. He's always been a pretty fast shooter. Mm -hmm. It's fun to watch. Playing with the full extension now. Looks like it's I a good know, He got a little too straight there. I thought he would have wanted an angle. I mean, he can still draw it back, but I kind of like shooting the seven from the center of the table as opposed to there. You don't like shooting it from right there where he's at right now? Not really. Okay. Yeah, not really. A more angle to come up. Mm -hmm. Okay, see? So he did have an angle. He wasn't straight. Yeah. But you see, that, that, that that's where you want to shoot it from. And you can play, you can play in the same pocket. I guess he likes the side. And if it's doable, that's fine. But I prefer the same pocket. Obviously, he does too. Didn't have to do anything special, right, just low left, you know, hit at moderate there. speed. Big match for Omar. Moves on. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. We appreciate each and every single one of you, and we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Congratulations to both players. Good night.